Hi, I'm Steve Plach, and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at uh, Community Television. And every program we highlight wonderful work being done by one of the nonprofits in Santa Cruz County. Uh, we, like you, are sheltering in place, so we hope you're staying safe. But because we're sheltering in place doesn't mean that we still can't uh, produce quality programming. And many of the programs we're doing right now is uh, focusing on how the sheltering in place and social distancing uh, protocols are affecting uh, local nonprofits in the kind of pursuit of their mission. So we're really delighted to have with us at the, uh, today Erica Anderson. Erica is the Program and Development Manager for the Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter. Erica, welcome. Thank you, Steve. So you tell our viewers as we start and before we talk about you know your main mission there at the animal shelter a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with uh, the Santa Cruz County uh, Animal Shelter. Yeah, so I'm the program and development manager with the shelter, uh -huh. and kind of my background stems from um, marketing and fundraising, and I just have a general communication background. And I've been in Santa Cruz for the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm originally from the Central Valley, Modesto area, and oh, I actually nice. grew up on a farm. So I've been an animal lover my whole life and um, always been around tons of animals, always mm -hmm. had a lot of animals. Currently only have one dog because it's Santa Cruz, oh. so it's difficult to have more than one pet. Um, but I was super excited about the opportunity to get to work with the county animal shelter. Um, I just, I love working with animals on top of uh, being able to do so many cool um, community outreach things within the community. Mm -hmm. um, we do different things like our free pet food pantry that we've started since COVID um, weekly, giving out free pet food, as well as um, going to different food distribution sites in Watsonville and giving out free bags of pet food there as well. Um, doing our Healthy Pets for All pop-up clinics, all those things are just some of the little reasons why I was so drawn to um, the animal shelter. And on yeah. top of that, we're the only game in town. We're the only admission, open admission shelter in the county, which means we're the only place the animals can go when they have nowhere else. That's wonderful. It's interesting you mentioned the Central Valley. I had a brother who lived in Manteca for many years, so I'm familiar with uh, that very warm weather out there and living in the Central <laughs> Valley, but welcome uh, to Santa Cruz. That's interesting. Uh, tell us just a little bit about uh, the history of the animal shelter there on 7th Avenue, and, and it's been there for a while now, but uh, let people know kind of, you know, the history of how that came to be over there, if, if, if you can. Yeah, um, so originally back in the day over, I think over 20 years ago, um, the SPCA actually had the contract with the county with animal control and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, that then transitioned into being the Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter. So now we still have the Santa Cruz SPCA. They're a separate organization than us. Um, and we are, like I was saying, the only open admission shelter and we provide all the progressive programs for the community as well. So we have our spay and neuter clinic and our uh, vaccination programs and all the other um, free services that we offer. Um, we also are really lucky to be supported by um, the Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter Foundation, oh. a nonprofit arm oh. of our shelter that right. um, helps us fundraise and support us in all kinds of project projects and fun things regarding fundraising. Well, we wanted to mention uh, early in the broadcast here that uh, people can donate uh, some money to the uh, to the animal shelter. It doesn't uh, all this good work just doesn't happen in a financial vacuum. So they can go onto your website and make a donation on there. Yeah, they can go to scanimalshelter.org and donate. Um, to a specific cause that they're interested in. If they want to support our free or low cost spay and neuter program, Plan Pethood, they can donate directly to that. Um, they can give to our general fund so that we can uh, support all of our programs equally. Um, and people who want to get involved in a different way, they can also donate um, unopened bags of dog and cat food oh, okay. um, as well to help support us in giving away free pet supplies. 
I didn't know that. Well, that's interesting. But um, so one of the, the focuses of uh, these programs that we're doing here recently during the sheltering in place and the COVID-19 social distancing is how those uh, protocols are affecting uh, particularly volunteer driven or partially volunteer driven organizations uh, like yourself. How is that affecting your ability to kind of do all the things that you need to do? Yeah, so we've been really lucky um, on top of having over 400 volunteers that are amazing and support us in so many ways, we cannot thank them enough. Um, we have been wildly supported by the community during this time. We never shut our doors. I mean, we, we technically locked them so people couldn't come in, but we were still doing adoptions. <laughs> we were still doing all right. of our normal things. Uh -huh. um, we actually only stopped doing spay and neuter for about a, the first month. Oh, really? of a shelter in place. And then after that, we worked out ways that we could do um, all of our check-in and check-out procedures uh, with social distancing in mind. Mm -hmm. um, our volunteers were waiting and ready to come back whenever we could have them. Um, but in the meantime, they helped us by fostering um, hundreds of animals during this time. Oh, okay. um, currently, I think we have over 70 animals in foster homes um, mm -hmm. between kittens and, and dogs. Uh -huh. And that's been something that we've really focused on and our volunteers have helped us in is that because we're open to mission, we never stopped taking in animals, right. we never stopped adopting out animals, um, but we had the lower, um, we, we weren't able to have volunteers come in, right. which makes it more, uh, provides more stress for the staff to be able to get the animals mm -hmm. out. Um, because for our dogs, for example, they typically get out three, four, five times a day on long walks and playing in the yard, and we didn't want that to stop. So the solution to that was them going to foster homes to really get to spend time with families who were home during this time and mm -hmm. get that socialization and fun time with a family while they were waiting to find their family. Yeah. So now, have you, have you been able to continue like the professional services that you're offering? I mean, certainly spay and neuter and chip insertion, things like that would be kind of professional services that seem to be, uh, would be doing on site. You still having offered those? Yes. So we switched everything to be online. So we mostly are able to do all of the forms and documents from our adoption application to our surgery waiver, they're all online to kind okay. of help um, with the social distancing protocol. Um, for spay and neuter, for example, um, we come out and get the animal from the vehicle. Everyone's wearing masks. We keep a, a distance. A dog's leash is six feet, typically, distance. Really? So that's How interesting. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with cats, they're in a carrier. So we have them set the carrier down and then we take the carrier. Um, mm -hmm. So there's lots of ways that we've been able to do that. And um, it's been working really well. Uh, that's the thing with um, the Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter is we provide so many free services and we're the only ones who are doing that in the community. Right. So we really strongly felt that it was necessary that we figure out a way to make it work um, mm -hmm. because our community needs it. They need the free and low cost bay and neuter. They need the low cost vaccinations. They need pet food. Um, and also they need a place for if their animal gets, gets out of the yard and yeah. somewhere for it to return to. So our animal control officers have been working this whole time. And something else that I'd like to mention is that um, all of our staff was deployed as disaster service workers with the county. So we are the smallest department in the county and we had the most employees show up to work at um, the different, uh, for example, I, I volunteered at a homeless shelter mm -hmm. in downtown Santa Cruz um, for multiple weeks. Um, when shelter in place first started. So that's something that all of our staff participated in as well as working at the at our shelter doing their normal daily tasks. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, one of the other hats that I wear is as a coordinator for the Faith Community Shelter, which is a rotating shelter uh, run by our local churches. And now those folks are sheltering in a place at a couple of local churches. So uh, wonderful work. And it's a great testimony to you and your staff and your volunteers and your people that you're really kind of continuing this great work under you know circumstances that make it just a little more difficult to really be able to do it. So we really appreciate that. One one of the things that we mentioned earlier that I wanted to talk about uh, was that uh, during the sheltering in place, people uh, have an increased uh, desire to get a pet. Is, is that uh, so you've had kind of an uptick and people wanted to come in and adopt? 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I was explaining this to someone the other day. It seems like they were flying out of here. As, oh as soon as, as soon as we would make them available for adoption, they would have an adopter. But uh -huh. with that being said, um, they've all been really great people coming forward that are thinking to themselves, I've always wished that I had a significant amount of time to take off work when right. I get a new pet because I would really like to kind of be home with them during this time, but I can never commit that vacation time to them or this, that, and the other thing comes up. Mm -hmm. So this time has kind of allowed people um, to feel like it's finally the right time for them to get yeah. a pet. So some people, um, it, it seems, are just waiting um, watching our website every minute and as soon as we post that pet that they've been waiting for they submit their application and we're doing all of our adoptions by appointment so they're submitting the application online and then we're scheduling an appointment with them for them to view the pet here at the shelter so it's been amazing so many good homes have been found during this time and I've just been so blown away by the Santa Cruz County community in general um, with how everyone everyone has handled um, this really weird situation yeah. and um, our community has really showed up for for us and I think for other organizations as well. It's another interesting example of kind of a silver lining around the dark cloud of the pandemic that there are really great wonderful things happening that have kind of been given rise to the fact yeah. that people have more time they have more energy they have more inclination to i know myself i we i grew up in a house with pets and i don't really have one now because of the lack of really time that it takes to give the pet a loving home and, and spend some time with them so it's wonderful that people are taking the opportunity now when they have the time to say hey you know let me you know let, let, let me give a loving home to to one of these pets yeah exactly exactly so now how is uh, sheltering in place uh, are you in the office daily yourself you're the development manager which means that i'm sure that you are helping raise money and do outreach and uh, development directors generally and managers mm -hmm. generally write grants and do all that you know do all that stuff that is very sometimes office intensive yeah i've i haven't stayed home a single day <laughs> so I've I've been <laughs> I've been in the shelter. We all have. Um, we we've all been here every day, and um, for me, my job has definitely changed a little bit. I've actually worked um, multiple days a week in our spay and neuter clinic, assisting with check in and check out to make sure mm -hmm. that we have enough staff on hand to be able to um, accomplish that with social distancing protocol, but yeah. also because, um, during the time that we weren't able to do surgeries, we did develop a pretty big wait list, mm -hmm. um, for those surgeries that were needed. So I was, um, working with them and still am, um, mm -hmm. to help us get caught up on that. So for example, we've been doing, um, over 50 surgeries a week. Um, we did 30 in one day last week, oh my. Um, which has been fantastic. Fantastic, and our staff has really stepped up to help us um, get through that wait list. And um, so my job has changed in little ways like that, but in ways that are fun because I think it's important for myself to, um, I wouldn't normally be vaccinating animals or helping in surgery, but it's something that helps me then better understand what I'm writing grants for or um, talking to people about what we do and why it's so important mm -hmm. um, to actually get to see the firsthand um, with the spay neuter clinic. So it's been, I keep saying it, but the most normal place that I've been during shelter in place is here. Is it the shelter? Is it work? Um, because we've been doing everything pretty much the same, just being safe with our social distancing and wearing face masks and all that. Um, but I mean, it's more normal here to me than going to the grocery store. <laughs> Plus there's animals, so. So again, for folks who uh, want to make a donation, certainly to the great work of the Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter, they can go to the website, SC Animal, SC Animal Shelter Animal. org. There you yes. go. And make a donation, make a generous donation that we're urging you to do. And it's wonderful having uh, written grants myself in the past. It's nice to be working in an agency where you can do a little hands-on th stuff yourself. And, and uh, yes. I know that's a little bit outside of your the scope maybe of, of what you would normally do, but it's wonderful to have that opportunity and be able to do it. Um, would this be a good time for people to have been thinking about uh, uh, putting a, a, a 
locator chip in their in their pets to be able to you know get online do the application and and uh, do that now while there's some time and uh, opportunity yeah yeah they could definitely fill out an application and keep an eye on the website if there's some um, a specific animal that comes available that they're looking for um it is kitten season so we oh are my. starting to <laughs> we are, are starting to have um, literally tons of kittens. Um, so people can keep an eye out for kittens specifically. <laughs> now, do you have uh, also over there at the, uh, the animal shelter some larger animals over there rather than everybody thinks of the animal shelters and dogs and cats, but, but certainly the animal kingdom, you know, encompasses a lot yeah. more than that. Yeah, definitely. Um, during shelter in place, this was probably just three or four weeks ago. Um, we worked with um, one of our rescue partners, Animal Place from Grass Valley, and they rescued over a thousand hens from an Iowa egg farm that oh, yeah. went out of business due to COVID. Um, huh. And they reached out to us and asked if we could take some. So we said, sure, we'll take 80. And they were all adopted to Santa Cruz homes within one week. Is that um, right? oh, <laughs> it was very, very interesting, but also so cool to see the the hens when they arrived. They were taking dust baths and enjoying the the rain, and uh, oh, they were just having the best time because they were egg hens um, that were probably kept in close quarters. They were de-beaked, so they're missing part of their beaks, and uh -huh. their feathers were kind of messed up. Um, typical things that you see with the egg laying hens like this. Um, so it was so exciting to get to see them go to really good homes in the local community where people are gonna take good care of them and also get some breakfast out of it, which is nice too. Yeah. Um, Do you and have we uh, the larger animals, the, uh, the goats or horses or things like that? We have a pot belly pig right now. Oh, really? um, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We don't have a horse or goats right now. Um, we did probably a month or so ago. They, they come and go. Uh, uh -huh. We typically work with rescue partners to place um, those animals. So this pig, for example, I think she's leaving probably in the next day or so to go to um, Little Hill Sanctuary out in Watsonville. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so. I'm always amazed by the kind of the generosity of our local community, and it really is uh, reflected, I think, in uh, their willingness to kind of you know take in the the less fortunate, uh, you know, of, of the you know the kingdom of people, you know, and that's that's the animals. Yes, yes, definitely, and. I think um, something that I've been reminded of a lot during this time is how much um, I think sometimes it's assumed that our animal shelter or any animal shelter that um, we only help animals because we're an animal shelter. But in helping animals, we are helping people constantly, mm -hmm. either by providing the cost free or low cost services um, and by reuniting them with their animals or helping them when they're no longer able to care for their animals. It's it's definitely, it's all connected. We're helping animals when we help people, and we're helping people when we help their animals. Do people come to the, uh, to the shelter um, looking for uh, emotional support or physical support animals? Um, every now and then, but that's not really what we specialize in. So a lot of times we'll direct people to uh -huh. um, do some research and see what they're looking for as far as the service animal goes. Um, technically, any animal could be registered as an emotional support animal. So there are people who do adopt from us that then um, get a note from their doctor to have that animal be their emotional support animal. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, spay and neuter and uh, chip insertion are two of the, the more well-known services. But I looked on the website and you have, you know, this whole range of different services. Talk about maybe two or three of the, of the things that people might not be as aware that the animal shelter offers. Yeah, yeah. So one of my favorite things that we do is our Healthy Pets for All program. It's a pop-up free veterinary clinics that we host typically monthly, monthly during COVID. We haven't been able to, but we are planning to host it again in August in Watsonville. Um, these um, events are 
basically completely volunteer supported. Um, uh -huh. We even have veterinarians and vet techs that volunteer their time. We do free wellness exams, provide vaccinations, microchips, sign people up for spay and neuter appointments. We typically have free food and other pet supplies. Um, and for a lot of people, this is the only time their pet will get to see a veterinarian and get those vaccinations and flea and tick meds or whatever they need. So mm -hmm. I, that's a one for me that is pretty close to my heart because I really enjoy um, being able to provide that service for people. Um, and like I said, we do it all over the place. So sometimes we're up in the mountains or out in downtown Santa Cruz or in Watsonville. Um, so we really, really try to make sure we kind of spread it out throughout the community. Um, the other program um, that we have that's currently in place that people can utilize is our one-stop program, and that's our vaccination program that people can call um, our main line, 831-454-7200. Yeah. They can set up a vaccination appointment to, for their dogs or cats. Yeah, and of course, uh, as uh, community television is the community television for Santa Cruz County, you are the uh, animal shelter for Santa Cruz County, so now you have facility down in Watsonville as well. Yes, that's correct. And we, because of staffing, we, we have had to close the Watsonville shelter during this time. Um, it's been uh, kind of limited staffed by an animal control officer every now and then. And um, we do have plans to open it um, starting in July and we'll be making that announcement on our website and social media. Well, that's wonderful. You have uh, you know, so many programs uh, that are going on. Uh, so, um, on an average day, uh, how, how, how large is your staff and the number of volunteers you would have kind of helping you out doing, doing this great work? You can't do it all by yourself. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, and we've been really lucky that we've been able to, like I said, we have so many animals in foster homes, so um, there hasn't been as much needed from staff to be mm -hmm. taking the dogs for a walk or socializing the cats or things like that. But as we kind of creep back into the normalcy, we have been having some of our dog volunteers come back and they've been walking dogs and getting them out in the play yards as well as uh, socializing the cats and um, rats also. We have rats right now. Um, <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> um, but day to day, um, we have anywhere from probably including volunteers probably 15 to 20 people spread out not close together we're social distancing of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course um but, but yeah we, we do have um our pretty much our full staff working um plus we're doing big surgery days so we have staff and volunteers um, working in our clinic as well so well, it's wonderful to hear, and of course, uh, anybody uh, uh, who knows anything about uh, uh, shelters and, and the need to get exercise for animals, you know, should spend some time maybe volunteering to, to walk a dog or walk a pot belly pig or whatever is really <laughs> needed because they need the, that kind of society and love and comfort just like everybody else. Yeah, exactly. I was out with one of our volunteers um, yesterday and she just sat down on the bench and the dog just jumped up on the bench and just sat next to her, just like kind of saying thank you for uh -huh. being here with me. And it's just the animals totally appreciate it. And they, they show you that they appreciate the time um, that the volunteers and the staff spend with them. Um, and currently we're not doing any um, new volunteer orientations right now just because uh -huh. we haven't decided if we're going to do them virtually similar to something like this or right. how we're going to bring in new volunteers. Right. Um, like I said, we have over 400 volunteers mm -hmm. and we're trying to slowly bring people back. So it is difficult right now, but we appreciate all the people who want to volunteer. Mm -hmm. So anyone can reach out and um, kind of get on the, the interest list so that we can right. let people know when we're ready. So uh, when you have uh, these orientations, how long does an orientation generally last for somebody to kind of get uh, you know, kind of oriented and then ready to really be able to help out? Yeah. Um, so we start with a general volunteer orientation that's typically a 30, 45 minute presentation uh -huh. um, where we just kind of let um, people know about who the shelter is and what we do and the type of animals that we um, typically see. If they're still interested at that point, then they sign up for a dog or cat TLC class. 
um, where they learn in a group setting with um, another experienced volunteer mentor trainer. Um, and they get to learn about kind of the procedures and protocol at the shelter and kind of um, just see what it's like day to day for a volunteer. After that class, if they're still interested, that's usually about an hour class, uh -huh. then they would sign up for an, a one-on-one -on -one mentor training with an experienced volunteer where they would get to then learn how to get the cat out of the kennel or get a dog out of the kennel and take them to the yard and how to put on the dog's harness or different things like that so that they really get a hang of it. If they feel comfortable after that, then they typically can start signing up for volunteer shifts. Well, it's wonderful that you uh, give people such a thorough indoctrination because there is a lot to being able to, to gently and, 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 and properly handle animals and make sure that they're comfortable and you're comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, safety of both people and animals is our first priority. So we always want to make sure that our volunteers are well trained and um, I, as a person who I've had tons of animals, it's completely different when you're getting a dog that you don't know out of a kennel um, in, in this type of setting. You want to make sure that you're really following the directions and that everyone has the same directions, that it's not a free-for-all. So we really take that into consideration. And we're lucky that we have so many longtime volunteers that are able to um, help us and train other volunteers and pass down their knowledge um, and kind of train people along the way. It's great. For people who uh, volunteers, they, they tend to be uh, uh, longer term volunteers to kind of stay with the program because certainly there's a lot to, lot to love in that. Yeah, definitely. We have uh, some volunteers that just contribute hundreds of hours a year. Um, and prior to shelter in place, I can think of quite a few volunteers that I feel like they work the same hours that I do. They're here <laughs> 40 plus hours a week, yeah. uh, which is amazing as well. We greatly like appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and it is wonderful. Again, it's a reflection of how generous our community is and how willing people are to give you know some of their time or and some of their volunteers uh, case a lot of their time to something that really is is so essential. It's a reflection of our community values, and so I think it's important for people to kind of you know take that into consideration when they're thinking about making a donation to scanimalshelter.org. We have about a minute or so left uh, what's the future holding for the animal shelter and and you and your staff and volunteers over there as we kind of move through the pandemic yeah um moving forward we're going to continue doing what we've been doing the whole time is uh, taking care of uh, the community animals adopted being a safe haven for animals that don't have anywhere else to go and uh, helping people out along the way with free and low-cost services um, as we move forward, we will eventually be fully opening our doors and letting people come back in and um, walk through the dog kennels or cat kennels or rabbit kennels and actually see the animals. But for now, it's all just online. And um, I've been really impressed with our staff's ability to transition into this way so quickly and to just keep pushing forward. And um, we appreciate all the support from everyone in the community, the, the patience, the respect, and just the generosity in general. Well, we appreciate your efforts and your staff and your volunteers. It always warms my heart every time that we do a program like this. Erica Anderson, a program and development manager for the Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter. Thanks so much for being here and uh, really continue to do this wonderful work. And we will talk to you again soon. Thanks. I've been Steve Plach, and uh, this has been another Thanks. edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, Join us again for another uh, program soon uh, when we're focusing on one of the wonderful, wonderful uh, nonprofits uh, in Santa Cruz County doing such great work like the Santa Cruz County Animal Shelter. We'll see you next time.